This video describes the fitting of the ICD 16.5 mm scleral lens from your Medmont E300 corneal topographer. Start by capturing a composite eye, which gives us an analysis of much of the peripheral corneal shape. This becomes very important to predict the entire anterior chamber depth well past the diameter of measure of our cornea. With the composite eye, we can then predict the peripheral corneal angles that are used to estimate the anterior chamber depth and the, the surface elevation that may be present. We can click on data and look at the corneal angle at zero degrees, five millimeters out, as well as the corneal angle at 180 degrees, five millimeters out. We know that when the corneal angle is greater than 35 degrees, we're more likely to need a higher limbal clearance zone angle in the ICD lens. When the angle is lower than 35 degrees, then we're far more likely to need an increased edge lift of the scleral landing zone with the ICD lens. Let's go to the contact lens software by clicking on Home and contact lens. Then under design, we'll choose the ICD 16.5 millimeter lens and click OK. This will create a theoretical fluorescein pattern. Let's narrow the screen down so we can see the entire parameter window. Then make sure that your scale, your colorized scale, is set for either the extended or the ICD clearance, which gives you an elevation of 500 microns distribution of fluid. For corneal GPs, the standard fluorescein goes from zero to 100 microns, which is generally where a corneal GP is best fit. So for the ICD, let's choose either the extended fluorescein or the colorized ICD clearance, blue indicating fluid thickness above 300 microns, green from 100 to 300, and orange from 0 to 100 microns of fluid thickness. Next, let's click our cursor in the center and measure the apical clearance, the fluid layer between the surface of the eye and the back of the lens. In this case, the TFC tear film clearance measures 420 microns. Our target for an ICD is 300 to 400 microns on insertion. So let's reduce the sagittal depth of the trial lens, go from a 4600 micron trial lens down 100 microns to a 4500 micron trial and click apply. Then when we click our cursor in the center, we can see our apical clearance has dropped down to 380 microns. Next, let's take the white axis line around and observe where this contact lens appears to be bearing on the surface of the eye. And certainly across the horizontal meridian, we have landing near three o'clock and landing near nine o'clock. And that landing appears to be very close to the limbus on this patient. This particular eye has a visible iris diameter of 12 millimeters. So counting six millimeters out on nasal and temporal sides tells us that this ICD will be very close to landing at the limbus. When we looked at the data on this eye, we saw that the peripheral corneal angle was measured to be above 35 degrees, and that told us the likelihood of needing a higher limbal clearance zone was almost certain. Now, next thing that we can do is we can settle this contact lens into the conjunctiva by the average 125 microns that ICD lenses settle over an eight hour period. Let's now click apply and we see that contact lens has now sunk itself in to the conjunctival surface and at the six millimeter diameter we would have heavy bearing at the limbus. And the ICD is designed to protect, protect the limbal stem cells 
So let's make a modification. Let's increase the limbal clearance zone five steps, the typical adjustment. Click apply. And we see that that angle has been increased significantly, lifting the lens off much of the peripheral cornea, but it still hasn't quite cleared the limbus at around six millimeters out. This patient would require an even higher than normal modification. Let's go to limbal clearance zone plus 10 and watch that angle change to increase that vault over this very high elevation limbus. Now that's created a lens with an extreme amount of apical clearance. We can see that on the graph or by clicking our cursor in the center. We're in the neighborhood of 530 microns. That would be too much fluid post settling. Let's target around 200 to 300 microns of post settling apical clearance. Let's go from a 4500 micron lens down to a 4300 micron lens. And that now gives us 316 microns of apical clearance. By increasing the limbal clearance zone 10 steps, that's increased the vault at the apex. And that's the reason why we need to go from a 45 to a 4300 micron lens. We could even consider going down to a 4200 micron lens to reduce that apical clearance down a little bit more. Now we're at 220 microns. So you can model changes to the scleral landing zone, the peripheral corneal clearance zone. What happens if you change one zone? How does that change the profile of the fit? So use the Medmont contact lens software to model how changes to each zone might affect the fitting of your ICD lenses. And ideally, use the Medmont contact lens software to select your initial diagnostic ICD lens.